So thank you very much. And uh, I am not a computer vision people. I don't know about nothing. Huh? So maybe that something I am talking about is very trivial for you. So sorry for my ingenuities if I have, but I am here to learn not to teach about because you are one of the best centers in the world, so I have only to learn. Hmm? So, a uh, few words about me, but he uh, introduced me briefly. I work at the University of Milano Bicocca, it is one of the youngest universities in, uh, in Italy, and uh, I am the director of uh, the PhD school in computer science, and I am also the director names. Uh, of uh, the Research Center of Complex Systems and Artificial Intelligence, that is the uh, topic I work on. Uh, there are 30 years that I work in these topics. And uh, I had the honor to be a guest professor at the Tokyo University at the Research Center for Advanced Science and Technologies. And uh, I also am a visiting professor of NYU at the current Institute for Mathematical Sciences. And uh, just that there is the list of the courses I teach and the topics I uh, work at in, uh, in my life. About me, I, I want to, to say you that is a, a very rare, I had a very rare career. We are only two in Italy because I have a master's degree in philosophy, in logics and epistemology and a PhD in computer science. It means that uh, I am not a philosopher. To have a degree is not to be uh, a worker on. But uh, this kind of degree, of course, influenced on my life, because when you study when you are 20 years old or 22, this knowledge influences all your life. So uh, I, if the people don't know this past, they consider me a sort of hard engineer. But uh, I, I try to, uh, to be fitted by other aspects of science, not only the successful applications we can develop. And uh, within this direction, I strongly believe that the future of science and technology uh, must face components coming from humanities. Because historically you know that humanities had a path and science had another one. And also in our education, sometimes with parents decide you are for science, you are from literature, and it is a sort of strong. But all is changing, because now the real challenge for sciences is in tackling problems that usually are in humanities. And I found a, a very good paper from Choi Park, uh, from medicine, that is strange, that makes, I, I will give Professor Shad, because it is very interesting, distinguishing these three words. Uh, hmm? that we use in a synonymical way, eh? that is interdisciplinarity, multidisciplinarity, and transdisciplinarity. Eh? And that are very different the meaning. And so I use the term multidisciplinarity because it is a process for providing a just a position of discipline that is additive, not integrative, because the integration of results coming from different disciplines is the real cha challenge. Some people doing that had the Nobel Prize, you know. So I am happy to stay in the second one uh, that is challenging, believe me. You will understand its premise. Hmm? And a uh, few words about uh, the research center. My research center that is tackling with this kind of disciplines, every three years we change the plan. We have a three years plan for research, and it is grouped not for competencies, but by problems. We want to face 
some urgent problems uh, where we use our, we dedicate our competencies. Usually, a research center, they describe competencies. I, I wanted to do another kind of style of research center, and for these three years, sorry, this is, this is the board, that it is an international board, and we have this, that is crowds, the topic I am talking about, Silverity, that comes from the fact that we study technological solutions supporting aging society, because aging society is becoming a problem and opportunity, and I dedicate so much research on it. Desert arts, that is, we work also in the, um, in the world of arts and architecture, because I believe that from arts uh, we receive a lot of uh, interesting challenges. Hmm? And it is a, a place uh, where you can develop very interesting technologies. And another point we, we are working on is computational knowledge and evolutionary economics, that is one of the alternatives to the traditional economy. And we, we want to develop uh, computational models to tackle this kind of new economy. This is the framework of uh, uh, my research center. And you can see that uh, we choose the issues because they are also, we enjoy, hmm? because we have not to suffer to develop science. Hmm? So let's come about crowd and more of you are involved in, uh, in this topic because they know a little bit the work of your group. And uh, let's come to the title of my talk, Groups and Complex Phenomena, Multidisciplinary Needs and Computational Challenges. So in this first part, I want to argument a little bit about what is the multidisciplinary needs. Hmm? We uh, face in order to develop computational models that are computational challenges. Most of you know that uh, the problem is uh, why to study crowds? Why? I started to, uh, to study crowds uh, because I had an invitation from a professor, a sociologist, a very famous sociologist, he died two months ago, in Italy, very famous, also in Columbia, he worked in Columbia University, and he called me, Stefania, I have some found to organize a conference, how could we, we fit together in order to do something? And I thought about crowds, because I thought that uh, sociologists and psychologists, they knew all about crowd. It is immediate. Eh? If I want to know something about crowd, I go to the sociologist. I was wrong. Because uh, the study of the crowd is not very well known as we imagine. Because we delegate other people to study some phenomenon. And we saw that it was an open issue, not only for sociologists and psychologists, but also for the people who want to manage uh, crowds to build buildings, public spaces, or uh, to reduce the risk, or to uh, deliver comfortable spaces and services, especially for transportation, uh, advertising, so, you know, it is, it is a huge uh, field where we can uh, find a lot of uh, problems for us. But what is a crowd? I, I, I know that it is a, a question that is very deep, hmm? and there is no definition. It may be in your case a crowd is a group of pixels on an image, hmm? but it is not crowd. Hmm? And it is very, very, very difficult. If some of you has a definition, I buy. Hmm? But it is very, very difficult. And in the case of psychology, we, we had a, uh, Mubarak uh, met him, uh, a very good PhD student that is a psychologist. I bought a psychologist in order to study the problem. Hmm? 
And uh, he had a very good uh, uh, overview of the theories. But you see that there is a group of theories that is contagion and transformation theory talking about crowd. That is, single individuals are transformed into a crowd, becoming uniform and losing individuality. And we agree. Hmm? But in certain situations, this room is not crowded. But if another arrives, another arrives, what, what is the limit? We can say it is crowded or not. Hmm? In physics, it is the concept of density. Hmm? But uh, without measurement, we have the perception that a place is crowded or not. Hmm? Because we are sensitive to the crowd density. Hmm? The crowd has a unique collective mind, Le Bon, hmm? that is very good at inspiring Hitler and the organization of crowds during Nazism. This appearance of conscious personality of individuals, sense of invincibility and tendency to imitate behavior. You see that it is impossible to choose one of that and or other theory, emergent norm and social identity theories. That is, crowds are not considered fully rational, but neither irrational. And there is a famous book, The Wisdom of Crowd, that is uh, very popular in the United States because crowd has a sort of really behavior that could be very rational, not irrational. Members of a crowd adequate to emerging rules transmitted by social interaction, or crowd members assume different roles, leaders for... All these definitions are coming from different scholars. It is difficult to choose. Uh, in, um, in our perspective, I anticipate, I bought Elias Canetti theory, but it is not a psychologist. First, he is uh, from literature, he's a Nobel Prize in literature, which is very strange. But he studied for 38 years crowds, and he observed the phenomenon. So it's a phenomenological approach. Hmm? Phenomenology means I observe and I describe what I see. Hmm? The other one is a convergence theory. People pursuing a specific behavior gather in the same place to get a common target. Or uniformity is at the origin of crowd, whereas being its consequence. And in this, the other group of scholars studying. So if you, if you go through the literature, you need to fix a point. So you have to decide what is the most convincing you, hmm? because there is not uh, objectiveness in choosing one, because there is not a uniform um, decision. As, as I told you, I choose uh, Elias Canetti because we had a hard work uh, of uh, designing uh, uh, a formal model coming from the theory of Elias Canetti, and we develop an ontological description because his book is very clear and uh, it's very formal, it's natural language, but like in the case of Galileo Galilei, uh, you can read natural language and natural language could be very, very perfect when it is used by very good scholars because of the ambiguities of this. So we did all this work and the Elias Canetti uh, theory is convincing. I, I, I could spend hours to talk about the theory, but it is not the case here. Moreover, we had contribution also from anthropology. Hmm? Anthropology, uh, you, I mean, you know anthropology, what is it? That is uh, a discipline studying what are different aspects from different cultures, but shared. Hmm? And from anthropology, I believe that the theory that is uh, called the proxemics, developed by 
Edward Hall, is one of the theory I decided to take in consideration because in this theory relationships between human beings in a crowd or in a social environment is interesting because when we talk about crowd immediately we focus about individuals in a very elementary physics level uh, object with mass velocity direction and uh, assume of the individuals is the crowd hmm? but we because of our education that is scientific is from Newtonian systems we uh, don't take care so much to the relationship we focus about objects and the relationships are in a secondary way we, and we want to focus especially on relationships that are very difficult to be represented in classical mechanical systems hmm? proxemics is a theory in which the study of certain miserable culturally dependent distances between people as they interact what does it mean? very very easy when you go up on a bus and there is one person, one passenger on, on the, it is very difficult that you go and immediately you sit just in this adjacent place, hmm? usually. But if you go in South of America, the people prefer to sit immediately in the neighborhood of other people. If you go in Japan, it's different. If you go in Italy, it is different. So it's culturally dependent. So if I think about crowd, the first is, uh, but w w what I am talking about, because it is not a general phenomenon, but it, there are some patterns in the behavior that are culturally determined by the culture of if you go in Saudi Arabia, it is very different from Japan and from the United States. So it is important or not to consider this one when I want to talk about computational models for the simulation of crowd. But it is a matter of fact that it is a phenomenon that has these characteristics. Hmm? If we go from, this is, it is a multidisciplinary challenge because uh, you see I just give you a very a glance of the problem that are deeply inside to other disciplines that it is important to know what we are talking about. And uh, before the new generation of computational models that are very young, less than 10 years, huh? We know that uh, uh, Crowd has been investigating in physics. If you take uh, a common, a very traditional uh, civil engineer and you talk about Crowd, he has very clear idea. It is the Newtonian uh, system. You can describe Crowd and all our laws for buildings are based on this model. That is the old fashioned, but remember that the sides of all the doors and security are based on this kind of model. It is very far from the reality. So we know that accidents or uncomfortable situations happen because it is not a fitting between the model of physics, traditional physics, and uh, new models. And uh, physical based modeling approaches have been touched in the last years. And um, we have as a representative Dirk Halbing, a very, very good guy, he's a, a very good scholar, who, uh, in, a, in a very successful way, uh, made a, an eruption of considering the pure physical based approaches. 
um, developing uh, this kind of model that is uh, uh, social forces. I, I will spend a few words again. But this is the new generation of studies in physics and in computer science to consider pedestrians and crowd situation. Then we had uh, physicists began to speak, I read, of crowds of molecules and to refer to such phenomena as mass phenomena. Thus we find the same atomization in nature and society, a social image of crowds common to various branches of learning, a similar concern for a science of confusion. Hmm? Because fitting some observation of some studies coming from sociology inside of some equations produced a lot of aberrations, something that was not useful for the understanding of them. And uh, we had some very interesting models coming from uh, uh, reaction diffusion, morphogenesis, and pattern formation but especially in social insect society because some years ago uh, through the work of uh, Terulatz, it's a very fantastic scholar from France, Toulouse University, and uh, studying uh, the how to observe animals uh, that use instinct in order to fit what is some behavior of but insects are insects, human beings are human beings, but it is very interesting the result of this part of ethological studies. And then another point that uh, uh, is a very good contribution in studied crowd is the dynamics of opinion formation, where techniques of nonlinear physics are flourishing. And one of the reasons I am in touch to New York University because the professor Bart Misha is studying the problem of social networks in order to understand the grouping of crowd of opinions and also in politics, crowd polarization and opinion, and they have no model, only statistical models. Maybe that is something more. And in NYU, they are very interested in studying what in social network is happening comparable to the physical crowd, to the high level and networking global abstract virtual crowds. Hmm? So this is a very, very interesting. So you can have a lot of fall in other um, disciplines, huh? starting from crowd. In biology, the crowding of molecules in uh, the design of new pharmaceutical products is another way in which they use the term crowding. Huh? And the classical mathematical models of individuals, so this is a sort of list of very interesting topics coming from other disciplines that can help us. This model assumes global interaction between the individual. So in all these theories we are changing the viewpoint from traditional mechanical physics to complex systems to see how uh, to look at this kind of phenomenon. Uh, so someone developed new generation of physical models, space-time dynamics of individual opinions or lattice topology, I, I don't know, I, I cannot manage this kind of mathematics, but it is another source of knowledge if we want to study crowd, because it is not, so you, you see that from uh, some theory coming from sociologists and uh, psychologists till hard physics, huh, we have uh, a, a wide range of opinions about uh, what the crowd is. The last one is a new generation of physical models and we have for instance uh, the application of very interesting models uh, to crowd uh, located in, in this case uh, arenas. Huh? The local behavior of participants can be interpreted in terms of chemically excitable medium 
with a reaction set. So you see that they are crossing chemistry, biology, etology, physics, complex systems, and there is a, a huge amount of uh, studies that are very, very interesting uh, to understand what is the complexity of the phenomenon. Can you, can you explain the uh, figure or just give us an intuition what it means? Sorry? The figure on the right. Yeah, you... it is a, a study. It is a study of uh, the crowd in a stadium using this kind of technique. This is not mine, this is from the literature. Okay. Hmm? There are a lot of studies of uh, this kind, but it is from chemistry. Hmm? Yes. So, crowds are discrete complex dynamical system is the uh, area where I, I concentrated my attention in the last, uh, in the last year because uh, the use of discrete dynamical systems is different. But um, very simply, uh, crowd is intrinsically a discrete dynamical system because you have not half pedestrian, one quarter of pedestrian. And you know that sometimes if you want to model and simulate discrete systems, but especially when you have a few numbers of elements, you are not sure that the mathematics under is functioning like using infinite. Hmm? So, and uh, the last one is that in sociophysics, from sociophysics, all these kind of domains have been investigated. Hmm? So in this overview, you see that there are, and there are a lot of very good suggestions, in my opinion, especially in, in your topic, because, for instance, I, something that I know, the social percolation. Hmm? Percolation, are you familiar with, the, with, with percolation? No? Okay. <laughs> there are a lot of very interesting theoretical patterns that could be very useful in the interpretation of some behavior of complex system like crowd. So, and this is just the overview. The last one is the use in some military or the study of battles with crowd simulation with high constraints like in case of military. And uh, the only one definition by Cruz that uh, is uh, the most uh, accepted is too many people in too little space. That is a sort of joke. And uh, within this framework, that is, uh, you, I give you the, the huge framework of what is crowd. Be before talking about crowd, you see how many stuff could be uh, faced. In, in the sense of computer science, we see that uh, there are at now, at now, the, the most the three uh, main approaches. One is particle based, that is the social force motor, model and derivative, the helping model, and continuous space and time, uh, Schneider, Mishinari, and other people. Cellular automata, ad hoc rules, floor field, again from Nishinari and Schneider, discrete in time and space, and multi-agent systems that with computer graphics, they use agent-based system, and behavioral models. We work in an intersection between these two approaches in, in my... And a provocative question, but what is a simulation? Because when you talk to people coming from traditional engineering, when I say simulation, they refer to this kind of simulation, where you have a tool for using computational methods to solve complex sets of analytical equations, numerical, you know very well this kind of approach, used to explore analytical mathematical models or formal statistical models. But there is another way 
you can face simulation, that is, capture and mimic real world empirical system. That is typical from the uh, bottom up uh, research in a complex system and discrete dynamical system. I, I observe a phenomenon and I want to get what are the principal rules I have to develop in order to have the same results, mimicking some relevant aspects of the phenomenon I am observing. That is the creation of possible world in silico, in silico or in machina, that is coming from Latin, that means on the computer, because we can have in the reality, hmm, or in a lab, that is in vitro, that is like in a lab, in biology, when you have uh, glasses to observe, or in machina, because the challenge of the future simulation systems and models uh, will be on the use of computers by experiments instead of make experiments in the reality or in the lab. So there is a big responsibility from the people involved in computer-based simulation because they are going to substitute. So like in this one, so you are saying the bottom one is the simulation or the real data? Like yeah. Those pictures? Yes. This is one <coughs> coming from a uh, plot of experimental observer data and this is from our, because of course there are some kinds of dynamics that are so well studied also in a traditional physics that we have to fit. We have to understand in a simulation what are some basic experiments and results allowing us to say that the simulation I obtained on the computer are fitting on the reality. That is conciliation, because it is validation, that is testing. This is the problem, because as you understand, if I want to count bacteria in a biological system, I have methods. But you know very well but that data from crowd are very difficult to be captured. Counting bacteria is easier than counting the people in a crowd. So how can I say that my computer-based simulation is respecting the reality. So the scholars working, they, we established what are some benchmark our systems must. And this is the case of T-junction. T-junction, corridor, and angle are the three benchmarking situation in which you have to test your computer-based T-junction when you both of these are T-junction, both examples? Yes, this is uh, numerical and this is agent-based. Okay. Yeah, so we have to obtain same <coughs> patterns. Then, uh, well, when, or the fundamental diagram, like Schatzschneider and Darby and the other people, if your machine, your computer program, mm. doesn't fit with the fundamental diagram, this is an animation. Hmm? Like movies, like cartoons, it's not a simulation. So uh, when we develop a, a, a model for crowd simulation, we have to pass through two or three benchmarking tests. Line formation, hit it by freezing, that is behavioral, that is numerical. Then you can add other things, but we compare. So the definition we adopted, hmm? Because I, I told you, we need a definition of crowd. Because from definition, I design some very nice aspect I want to focus on to in order to build the model. Is a crowd and be defini defined as a gathering of people, okay, standing in a close proximity, attention to the relationship, at a specific location to observe a specific event. So profiling the kind of the situation and the people that is gathering in the situation is crucial. 
who feel united by a common social identity and despite being strangers are able to act in a socially coherent way. So in this definition there are the roots of the principal modeling aspects taking in account uh, some aspect coming from other disciplines. Hmm? But another point of the crowd that is uh, there are only few years that few scholars in, in the world are facing is the fact that crowd is always a crowd of groups. If you go in the street when it is crowded, it is very, very difficult that you find single people. And since we had to test a model when, uh, in, in Australia at the Monash University when we work, to, in order to find, since they developed a model that is not allowing to represent groups, eh, we had to fit the situation to, and the only one situation where you have a lot of single people is commuters in the race station, hmm? because they are single. But usually the crowd is a crowd of group, and it is very difficult to fit the notion of group in traditional uh, computational model developed by. So it was the challenge, especially we started to study group when we worked with Hajj in Saudi Arabia and we realized that all the dynamics is determined by the management of group that are only in the trough there is a losing of identity of the group, but not so much, because sometimes the people is accelerating or something because they are waiting for some, someone else. So the relation between the elements of a crowd is very important because the dynamics of interaction influences <coughs> the dynamics of all the system. Hmm? So we started to uh, to, 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 to study the impact of groups in pedestrian and crowd dynamics. Hmm? And we started to work. In the literature, I, 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 I pass by because I give you the presentation so you can have some references if you want to, to study. There is a lot of, uh, uh, no, there is not a lot of literature. So only few people is studying uh, groups in, in the literature. Now it is more, we influenced a little bit the direction of the research. And it is very important to notice that uh, all the three models, they develop something. But it is all the literature we have. In, in the last two years, maybe more, because other students published together. But, and you see that in these models, you could start to represent also the notion of group, not only. And you see that there is some attention, and it is maybe is important for you, on what is the role of groups, because sometimes groups, they have a pattern. In the literature, we study three kinds of patterns for three people, because there are a lot of groups we will see with uh, couples and three people. And it is very important to understand what is the geometry of the group and how they tend to preserve the pattern also when they are disturbed by the presence of others. This is a, a very important so point. So these are in the space of single time or it's like a... No, no, dynamic. Video. video. So they will maintain like this when they are in a <coughs> river situation, it is in no, the breast situation, yeah. when there is other people, they tend to come to be camera and they split. Mm. Hmm? The four is uh, rhomboidal and the V-like or the other. Mm. And we observed it in many situations for stair, for crowding, and uh, it is in the literature, and we could observe mm -hmm. also. But I mean, this is restricted that they are in the stair, so it may be different. Also in the street. Not, also, not yes, uh, sometimes when you are in the street yeah. and there is uh, three people, 
and you want to pass, huh? Huh? you know that they are occupying. Maybe they come in this way and they become. Or another behavior, couples. Hmm? When, you, when you go in, in, in the street and you see a couple coming, it is very, very difficult that you go inside, instinctively. And if you do that, huh? yeah. If you do that, sometimes you say sorry, yeah. because you disturb our relationship. You, you know, the link is very, very hard. So that's intimate, intimate distance yes. that they are yes. very close. Yes, and you don't break, uh, because the mm -hmm. social behavior is, you don't break. break and if you are talking and someone is breaking, you know, it's uh, impolite. Mm. So you, you see that there is a, a social, because we are immersed in the phenomenon, we, we are not able to observe something. So we need to make some precise observation. So the cohesion of groups uh, is, a, is a very, very important problem. So, so this, I think we are very interested in this. So what is this diagram? Can you explain to me? No, because I will show you more. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we are going inside. Okay. I, I, I know that you are interested in that. Yes. So why I am here? I am here because computer vision is providing a fantastic tool for the analysis of crowd since we work in synthesis. This is, this is, from the epistemological viewpoint, it must be very clear that you make different jobs. Hmm? You understand? But it is the moment in which we have to collaborate. Because we are tired to make people counting from hand, for instance. Hmm? And it is very important for you to understand where a model could be useful for developing new uh, computational models in computer vision. And the intercession point, in my opinion, is to design better and together a methodological issue regarding observation of the phenomenon and how to design experiments. Hmm? because uh, we have a, a lot of experience, but we want to join new technologies in order to grow together, feeding each other by different kind of knowledge. This is just a diagram. This is, I can give um, Professor Shah uh, the paper. It is uh, on a new paper we published just now for the workshop of Sukuba. We submit it, but I can give you, give you a, like, like a draft. And I want to show you this experience. I, I talked to Professor Shah just yesterday about. You see, this is the Gallery of Milano. Some of you have been in Milano, maybe, and it is very famous because it's the side of Duomo di Milano. It's a very beautiful, you see, fantastic marble uh, floor, but uh, this fantastic marble floor is very useful to make observation because you know the sides, you know the distances. So we had the, observe, look, look, look groups from here, then I have another one that's more precise, and you can see that you have pigeons, the people is, no, this is not a pigeon, this is, a Chinese man who is selling this uh, uh, in the street, uh, that is uh, collision avoidance and the groups, you saw, you, you, the people that is, one is attracted by a window, the other is waiting, maybe he's a husband with a wife, but they wait. Huh? And the, the, all the, the behaviors that are typical of it is a low uh, density crowd, but you can observe a lot of, look at that group. The group they modify, but they want to maintain the shape. It is, it is a, and in order to have this kind of observation, we obtain the permission 
of the municipality of Milano to put a video camera. We are very rough in using video cameras, it's not our job, so please help us to use in a proper way video cameras, because you, you know the technology, we, we don't know, we, we do. So the, 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 the video camera was put in this place, this is the La Scala, in the back there is the Duomo, and it is a perfect, so we can study what is the distortion for the perspective. And we, so let me, that analysis, this is, so the survey was performed in one day for two, three hours. Thanks to the official authorization, we had the permission. The staff were consorted four observers, four people. The equipment considered of two video cameras with three points. This is the frame, very, sorry, but it's very elementary, but it's the best we could do. Second, the survey was aimed to collecting data about level of density and walkway level of services. Hmm? That is the fruin, that is very important to understand the level of services. Presence of groups, it is true or not that we see groups, yes. Group size and proxemic spatial patterns, trajectory walking speed, group proxemic dispersion, the way in which in certain situations the group are dispersing and then they are coming back. So we obtained all this kind of observation. You know, it is an analysis without any, from the video. So, so these are the trajectories? Yes. So yes. you did manual? Yes, yes. In order to compare with other kind of trajectory you can have, so we, we made this huge amount of work in order to fit, to see what is uh, the, the, the difference between automatic and manual. So we wanted to do that in order to talk with the people of computer vision, what we need to make analysis, because this kind of analysis is fundamental for us for the validation of simulation models. Why In are some lines dashed and some are dotted? See? Why are some lines dashed and dotted? I don't remember why there is, uh, because maybe that is the blue is one direction, the other one, maybe that is a group and another a single. There is a, a legenda that is in the paper, but this is just to, to show you that in, in which way we study. But look at this new video, because in order to fit distances in a proxemic way, we used a very elementary, sorry for that, selected portion of the gallery was considered for the analysis, that is the size of the portion, a square grid design using Photoshop was used in order to discretize the environment cell and to perform that analysis because in this way I can have for each framework what is the difference. This is the same video before after this treatment so you can see but in this case we could, there is a dog, so I can separate groups and have the measurement of the bigger size of the dispersion or cohesion of groups. So how long is this video? How many hours? Three, Three hours. Three hours. Yes. So it's very, very long. This is, I don't want to bore you with the three hours of this movie. Yes. But you understand what we did. But in the case, because I, want, I would like to share, yes, I, w I would like to share because you can see this and you have the same that is with the squared marble. Uh, so so it, it could be important because he's very clear, clean. The other is uh, confusing because it's a very elaborated floor. So you can make some comparison because at the end, what I want, I want this one. The directional pedestrian flow were measurement every minute 
for each minute I know who is passing and what is. The total flow was composed of 7773 seven, seven, people. So, do you want to make people counting? Let's see if you, because it is 7773. Seven, seven, yeah, yeah, this is the challenge, you know, because we, we with the poor uh, postdoc and the PhD today had to do that minute per minute. Huh? The level of density was low, that is elementary. The average working level of service corresponded to the B level, that is 7.78 pedestrian at to minute to for meter, that correspond to an irregular flow in low density situation from the literature. Hmm? I, I am finishing because I have a, uh, I, I didn't, I, I will not go in detail to the model. So, look about groups. It is very, very, very interesting. A subset of 15 minutes was extracted. In 15 minutes, one, six, four, five people, that is 21%. Presence of group is 84.9. So, it is true that we have to consider what is the cohesion of group. The size and proxemics arrangement were detected. And we have Lane, River, Wulaik, Rhombus, to uh, Diaz. You see, we made a classification that I think that could be very interesting for you. And it is for four members, triple, a couple. So you see that couples are the major numbers. And they have, and in Tokyo, we study in the in experiment, eh, not observation, the role of couples inside of high crowded corridor. And we saw that sometimes they switched the position, or sometimes they maintained, but we observed the leadership of one member of the cup. That it corresponds when you are a different gender. If it's a, so crowded, I am with my husband, it is difficult that I am in the back. First, I am smaller, and I can conquer space. Second, he's worried. And when you are crowded, then there is a child, or a human in some cases, and it is a behavior, this is a pattern all, all around of the world. So, we have also the result for the speed, because we could have, because of the measurement of the speed, and what are the trajectories, so this is the legend, single, couple, triples, and four members. So which model fits the observation test? Does helping model, can it predict how people arrange Who? The helping model? No, 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 this is... So different. This is, no, no, I've been developed this. This is observation. And on the basis uh, hmm, of this observation, we could make a calibration of our model. It's not helping, it's another one. And it is uh, results of uh, the speed. This is from proxemic dispersion, the way in which the patterns have a deformation and they come back. And uh, all the analysis of the group, and then, just because it's spectacular, we immersed in a, the Galleria and we made the simulation with this data inside of the gallery. It arrived in a few seconds. This is just a use of a spectacular technologies, but this is, using this data, we wanted to populate the gallery in order to have a similar uh, behavior, where couple remains couples, you know that they change the shape, the three and the four, and they come back, reproduce, because it is based on the <coughs> proxemia, and it's the adaptation of groups to the formation and to dispersion of groups. 
Thank you very much.